Malcolm had come out with this fantastic poster. It was, a, it was, it, and it was, it was genuine art. I really, I still think so. And it summed up that whole thing of the Sex Pistols. And um, we then took them for a photo session, me and Peter Vernon, who was our photographer, as you remember. And Pete, Pete and I had always hit it off great. And he was a very clever photographer. He was a witty guy. And people liked him. And the Pistols liked him straight away, all four of them. And we had a real laugh that day, and we and we took Pete took the iconic photograph of the Sex Pistols, which is them coming through. We went to the basement. We got these little cans of beer and stuff that, that were, uh, and they were just fooling about. They were just four young guys in a rock group. Actually, the, uh, they were three young guys in a rock group, and Johnny Rotten, <laughs> who was different to the others. Eric Hall, who was the TV guy who really didn't like the Sex Pistols. I mean, he just thought they were absolute junk, but someone had pulled out something. Anyway, they suddenly were appearing at six o'clock on Bill Grundy. And um, suddenly Eric was uh, crowing about it all. I've got the boys on television, they're fantastic, they're amazing promotion. This is the sort of thing I do for my artists. To, uh, come and have a look. And, uh, everybody in my office, we were all sitting there boozing away. And um, on it came, you know, Bill Grundy. Um, it slowly developed in, in this ludicrous thing where it was always going to be Steve, wasn't it? it was, who, Bill Grundy said, well, say something outrageous. He said, you fucker, I was like, you dirty fucker. It was nothing, really. I knew straight away, well, this is just going to be absolute murder. And Eric... Eric rushed out, I always remember that. Oh no, guy, I'll never work for me again. I'll never work with a boy, the sex pistol was finished. Finished the music industry. And that was the end of that. So, um, but there was a lot of laughter and, and it was, I thought there was a lot of humor in the incident. But then again, you know, the next day, bloody hell. Off it came and um, we got some phone calls. Well, I got them because they, was, they were put through to me and uh, there it was. So now I'm getting a few members of the public, not many, mainly journalists, you know, wanting a bit of this and a bit of that. And, but they were all, funnily enough, they, they were okay. The, the press were fine. The most annoying call I had, and I, I never liked the woman since, I got this phone call, it was a woman, and one of the, one of the switchboard people said, this woman, she's being really heavy and on the phone and I said okay put her through she said I'm Diana Rigg quite nasty you know and said now I've, I've rung up to complain about the sex pistols this kind of voice these disgusting young people are absolutely horrible how can anybody sign something like that it's absolute disgrace that it's not even as if they're clever I found that annoying that she said it's not even as if they're clever I said well, why should they be I said actually if you listen to those lyrics they are quite clever. It's artistic. She said, no, it's not. They're not in um, equity. I'm in equity and I'm going to get all my members. I said, well, they're probably not even, the mus even in the Musicians' Union, but it doesn't matter. And we had quite an argument about it. And then it ended up with me saying, look, I've, I've had enough of this. You want to speak to our managing director? <laughs> I've put it through to the uh, fifth floor. <laughs> so... I never liked her since, I just couldn't see it. Whenever I see her on television, pretending to be interested in art and stuff like that, I think, what a disgusting person that is, because she was masquerading. Because I think she was wrong. 